I will ask uh, uh, participants and delegates here uh, to, if you have to ask and comment, please write your name and whom you would like to ask the question. Uh, you can write a question, simple question uh, and uh, to whom you should present, uh, write it. Uh, so, uh, unless uh, a collection of uh, names uh, through volunteers, uh, I will deliver very short uh, Chairman's remark. Hmm. Uh, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Venerables, uh, uh, respected monks and nuns, uh, uh, my, uh, I please accept greetings from the land of Buddha and land of Everest. Hmm. Uh, we have uh, um, listened uh, to the speakers and one friend from India, Mr. Alok. Um, Mr. Alok really is, uh, gave insert but very um, uh, bright uh, relationship between uh, India and Nepal in spreading Buddhism. Uh, first, uh, we have to develop greater Lumini tourism circle. Then we have to link with Sar. Buddhist circuits. Uh, there is an agenda in Sark and Bimstek uh, about the prospect of developing regional Buddhist circles. So we have to march ahead in enlarging these circles. Then we can link with Asian Buddhist circle uh, where Mansarovar and Kailas will be one of the component. We can develop uh, this new prospect also. So, uh, tourism prospect, pilgrimage prospect, linking one circle with another bigger circle and, and now uh, in Africa also I have seen new monasteries, in Latin America also new monasteries. So in North America, in Canada, in the USA there are many new monasteries and schools. Uh, so Buddhism is now um, universal in uh, areas uh, in terms of research uh, works uh, uh, it has taken new uh, dimension now is yesterday and today we have discussed about applied buddhism so nepal is a place um, uh, where we have pro uh, crisis in three level akash patal and surface the mean just like in Patal, in surface, um, within the underground, the conflict of plate between South Asia and Tibetan plateau, so earthquake hmm, is a feature where we have to face. So we have to prepare earthquake resisting conscious, earthquake conscious citizens to minimize the possible uh, damages. So that should be new component in our lessons to be delivered as an applied Buddhism uh, to prepare the people uh, to cope with things. In surface, we have environmental degradation problems. We are in between two largest polluters of the world, not accusing them, but as a rising industrial state, India and China. There is pollution, uh, coal uh, they are using. Uh, uh, so, Snow is melting, malaria is rising up <laughs> in the mountains, and there are glaciers outbursts sometimes. So uh, this, in, uh, this, so we have the monks and monastery in northern uh, Nepal, uh, but they should concentrate in glaciology to avoid the sudden outbursts of from these glaciers. And in sky, Akash, climate change <laughs> is a big problem. So we have to cope with uh, uh, climate change uh, um, uh, and um, uh, people, uh, world people, particularly developed people like Canada, Japan and others should help us uh, to cope with uh, uh, climate change. So, but in the Buddhism, uh, during 
Buddha's Buddha has given certain uh, environment where there is Buddha, there is Bodhi tree, where there is Buddha, there, there is protection of environment. It, the Sangha has taken care. So this tradition should be more widened to cope with uh, the problem to solve climate change. Uh, so, so lastly, I want uh, to suggest, uh, Honorable Minister is here, that let us make Lumini as a venue for international peace dialogue. Particularly, well, people go to Geneva and have, they have peace talks to solve the crisis. So we should provide logistic support to the uh, crisis solving people. Uh, this is great. Lumini as a place for peace dialogue. New Geneva. Mm, uh, uh, to uh, uh, have a dialogue and seek uh, peace. So this is my humble suggestion. Now, if there are questions... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Prakhat Banjade ji. Okay, he's a student of a master's uh, MBA in Buddhist University, Lumini. He has asked some of the very brilliant questions. Thank you very much. It is really very much attention drawing. My, no, my presentation was uh, scientific moral development for the overall and integrated development of tourism in the region. And this such a skeleton in the model minutely cannot pick out all these activities. However, there is a space. I would like to show you. The first one is uh, tourism integration, where first we diversify the tourism types. My uh, research has shown showed that there are eight types of tourism very much vi viable in the Greater Lumini area, and they should be integrated to produce the synergy effect. And synergy, I'm not going to dis discuss about. I, I have explained a bit before. And the second phase is tourism development. We'll show you next, please. I think it will fit somewhere in tourism development. There is, please see, product development. Product development, unique selling point. In the, under this section, like you have said, horrible plants to be planted and marketed for uh, commercial purpose as well as for environmental protection that your perspective I really appreciate and this your point of view will just fit inside that uh, unique selling point there are lots of things like we have to increase the length of stay in Lumini we have to separately design strategies to fight we have to separately design the uh, uh, strategies for that how to for example Lumini area is very hot, AC system in transport system, wa wa water fountain system, water based theme park should be, there are many things, okay, but this model uh, uh, can only in macro level only it speaks about, later we have to go in a micro level. Thank you Prakash ji. Oh, okay, many questions are coming, thank you. Saki Suresh, thank you so much sir, it is really very br brilliant uh, idea. He has said that this model is really brainstorming. Thank you so much for your appreciation, Saki, sir. Okay, we have to, uh, he says, uh, is there any provision in this idea to disseminate the prosperity of the Lumini? To, of course, in benefit sharing, of course, there are, you can see, uh, last slide, will you please go to the last slide here? Within this model, See, your question is addressed here. Evaluation measures are there. How quality in service uh, and development, sustainable triangle, it's a scientific triangle this is, and local employment. I think you may find somewhere there local uh, economic uh, opportunities and uh, economic growth benefit sharing. I'm talking about the social justice in be benefit sharing so that the local people will be maximum benefited from this tourism 
uh, and heritage protection. Thank you, Sir. sir. And uh, we will highlight some of the uh, challenges. Okay, thank you. It is Santos Vandari, uh, IR student. Thank you very much. He says, Will you highlight some challenges for Greater Lumin area, environmental, local development? Of course, this assessment has been done during the studies for which you got to wait for the full paper. Thank you. However, there are challenges, environmental challenges. Are you? Thank you so much for the brilliant questions. Like with the uh, many factories are fostering just uh, in about the, uh, you know, less than 10 kilometers of Lumini World Heritage property. And there are lots of uh, problems are there, challenges are there. Local community development, there is also a problem. So this, anyway, this machine, the, uh, this model will solve, I think, in theoretical aspect and then implementation and educative other aspects are there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Rai. Uh, the Venerable will uh, respond to the questions. Uh, a student from uh, Lumbini Buddhist University, Prashant Banjade, asked this question. Buddha pointed out that uh, what a shortage of generosity, a utopia of harmony, and well-being eventually dissolves into a stake of chaos. Please let us know how to achieve privilege or maintain serenity in the society. There is lack of uh, generosity because most of the time we do not recognize the richness that exists within all of us. Actually, if you think carefully, just imagine how priceless your breath alone is. Imagine when you reach to the last day of your life and you are there to breathe only last three more breath, breathing exercise. You have opportunity to have three more last breath. At that time, imagine that you have billions of dollars in your account. And again, imagine that you are willing to give all your billions of dollars to whoever wish to take, if they can extend your breath. Imagine again, you are the most powerful person on this earth. And now you're there to have only three more breaths left to breathe. At that time, imagine again, you have thousands of armies surrounding you and you have missiles you have everything that you need to destroy anyone. But imagine if you are willing to destroy somebody with your power to gain three more breaths to extend your existence on this earth. Imagine whether that is possible or not. So therefore, if you really think carefully, there is richness in all of us. Being able to recognize that richness is the most important generosity. From that very point onwards, you will feel there's nothing that you cannot give. Nothing that you have to possess and own for yourself. I always say this to my friends everywhere in the world. Generosity shows the strength of yourself because when you are generous, you are able to free yourself from attachment to whatever you are most attached to. So generosity is opportunity. When you look at that way, 
there is a possibility for us to free ourselves from poverty mentality. When we have, when we are able to free ourselves from poverty mentality, there comes true generosity for ourselves and for all beings on this earth. With this, we will be able to recognize the qualities of each and every individual. With this, we will be able to recognize the qualities of each and every society. With this, we will be able to recognize the qualities of this world, this universe, and its inhabitants. When we are able to see in this way, we will be able to achieve privilege. We will be able to maintain serenity in our lives as well as in our society. This is the essence of Buddha's teaching. Buddha taught first thing that life is precious. To be able to realize the preciousness of our life will make us the most generous person. Through that, we will be able to achieve serenity. We will be able to achieve privilege. We will be able to maintain dignity in our way of living. At the end of the day, most important thing is to be able to live in this world with a dignity and to be able to leave this world with no regret. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable. Uh, so we have a few minutes more time. Uh, so the uh, floor is open now. Uh, two or three questions we can entertain uh, uh, to, make, uh, to fill up the gender gap. I will ask Madam's ladies to ask and comment if you have any. One from, at least from Madam's <laughs> participants. Is there? You, do you have, you can come and uh, make comment. Two minutes comment. Madams or others? Uh, yes. Okay. Respected chairs and tourism ministers and all the scholars and my participants, I have a very simple question. Uh, with our sir, Hari sir, about the greater Lumini. It is very simple. Uh, regarding the greater Lumini, only the name, name express the meaning that uh, does it affect the settlement of the people or not with the greater Lumini. So this is my question. It is very simple. And I want to answer in a very simple way. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Farindra Bhai. His question is, does it affect the settlement in the greater uh, Lumina area? So he may be talking about the uh, plan, development plan, something like that, like Lumina master plan or Professor Cox's master plan like that. But this plan I was presenting uh, what was a simpler model. Of course, this model somewhere is if the space fits into, I must be aware that land acquisition is the failure system of getting land in the world today. Nobody accepts this. So in alternate, land pooling and land swamping. This type of land getting system has been very popular and the same policy has been applied, adapted by Professor Koch in his master vision plan. That should be appreciated and that should be followed. Thank you. So, uh, I have already uh, uh, remarks, my uh, uh, concluding remarks. Uh, uh, I have already delivered, so nothing to add. Uh, I would like to, once again to thank speakers, very enlightening um, uh, and educative deliberation they have. The questioners and competitors, uh, they also um, uh, 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 thank, I would like to offer them uh, because uh, their active participation is quite encouraging uh, to make 
uh, this session uh, more um, vibrant. Uh, so thanks uh, and um, the presence of uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Venerable uh, De Deputy, um, uh, this uh, Chief of this Lumini Trust, uh, and so the, the, uh, so this is. Uh, uh, glorifies this session. I like to, to offer thanks to them uh, also. And thanks to all participants, very patiently listened, participated. Uh, so uh, this session is successful. Once again, thanks, and this session is over. <laughs> <laughs>